Unit six, yeah, lesson nine, very short. Okay, so um, I'm not very good at pronouncing this, but sinusoidal functions is simply, sinusoidal functions is simply cosine sine graph. That's all that means. It's just a fancy word that describes both those types of curves. So there's sine and cosine graphs, okay? And it kind of talks about here, so the function whose graph resembles a sine or cosine curve is called sinusoidal. Again, I'll double check the pronunciation if I'm not doing that right, I apologize. The graph of those functions called, we did that already, sorry. Many periodic phenomena have these type of graphs. Time of sunrise, uh, the height of a chair, Ferris wheel, the height of a chair, the Ferris wheel, depth of ocean, changing the tides. Obviously, guys, since I lived in Hawaii last year, I was very aware of the tides and when they're coming in, when they're coming out. So those things are all sine and cosine curves, okay? In this lesson, the equation, we'll be looking at the function and the, what it makes. In the next lesson, we're going to say, here's a graph, what function made this? Okay, so let me say that again. This lesson, it's going to give you the function. We're going to describe what it's doing. Next lesson, we're going to be given the graph and go backwards and say what function makes this graph. Okay, so we're just doing examples. It's going to be kind of short here. So the depth of uh, D meters of waters in a harbor, T hours after midnight, can be approximated by this function. 12 plus 5 cosine 0.5 t, where uh, t is between 0 and 24 for 24 hours. So it's determine the maximum and minimum depths for water in the arbor. We can do exactly what we just talked about on the previous lesson. So what do we do? To find max, it is what? Yep, max, max is a plus d, so that's going to be what? Right, 17 meters. 12 plus 5. The D's in the front there. That 12 is still D, right? The min is negative A plus D. So that's going to be negative 5 plus 12, so 7 meters. So your min is 7 meters. Your max is 12 or 17 meters. What's the period of the function? So well, what is B? 0.5, which is 1 half, right? Flip, multiply to 2 pi, right? So our period, so remember, 0 0.5 is 1 half. So we're doing 2 times 2 pi, so 4 pi again, right? When it's 1 half in front, you flip it, multiply to 2 pi. Like, remember, 1 half is a longer period. You have to flip the... Oh, this does? Two times, two pi. Okay, it's extending your period. Okay, I'll just go ahead and save you guys a little time, but the suitable window, which we're going to use, is we're going to do 0, 24. We're going to go by 2s for x. So if you're doing your window in your calculator right now, go ahead and do that. We are 0, 20. We're going to go by 5s for y. Okay. And when you do this, the graph's going to look something along the lines of something like that. OK, it says, what's the depth of the water uh, at 2 AM? Well, 2 AM is just 2 for time, because we start at midnight, right? So midnight, 1 AM, 2 AM. So we just put a 2 in for t. Okay, so that's all we do here. So t is 2, we plug that into our t, and then we go ahead and calculate. Okay, so when you calculate that, you're going to get 14.7 meters. So in regards to 2 a.m., is that closer to high tide or low tide? High tide, right? We're at 14.7, the max is 17, so it's relatively a high tide okay, at that time. What's that? You got a straight line? Okay, we'll look at it here in a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here. I'm gonna, oh, I got the calculator here. Let me put the calculator on. Let's put the calculator in for this next piece. So it says, a ship which requires a minimum of 8.5 meters depth to har is harbored at uh, midnight. What time to the nearest minute must it leave to prevent grounding? So what that means is, 
is that we know it right now it's a high time at night. They're not going to leave at 2 in the morning. When can they leave and get out OK? Because it's going to get below 8.5, because 7 is the low. The ship can't leave when it's under 8.5 because it's grounded. It means actually the water's so low, the ship's now just sitting there actually on the ground. Okay? So, and that does happen. Okay, it's a real thing. So what they have to do is figure out, well, when does it have to leave by to prevent grounding? So what we're looking at is our equation that we just made is in Y1. The equation we just made is in Y1, so the 12 plus 5 cos 0.5x is Y1. Your Y2 is going to be the 8.5 that represents the meters in which it'll be grounded. Okay? So we are going to go ahead and look, and it's talking about that first time. Okay, so that first time. So we're not, I mean, we know this goes continuous, but let's go ahead and go to the calculator here. All right, so if we go to the calculator. Let's see here, I might have to get this on. Let's pause this for a second. Okay, so let's see, let me get mine changed. Okay, so we're going to go to, let's change everything. I'll do this with you if you haven't done it yet. So we got 12 plus cosine 0.5x. Okay, did I forget the 5 in front? Okay, thanks. The 5 in front. Oops, that's 125, the wrong spot. I'll reboot that. Second insert, 5. Okay, there we go. Delete. Okay, there we go. 12 plus 5 cosine 0.5x. Y2, we're simply putting 8.5. And I'm going to adjust my window here. So my window I said to use was 0, 24. Go by 2s. Your Y, I said 0, 20. Go by fives. Okay. So, oh, that's so I'm in the wrong mode as well. That's good to see. Okay, need to be in radian here because we're talking about lengths, not degrees. There we go. Okay. So what Aiden said is, how do you know which one? Well, once it says it says here um, midnight. By what time the nearest minute must it leave to prevent grounding? So it's going to be grounded this hole under here, right? So we want to leave before that first intersection point. That's what we're asking, the first time in the morning. So we want to hit your second trace, intersect. Okay, we're going to arrow over close to that first intersection spot. Come on, oh, I keep hitting down. There we go. Okay, hit enter, hit enter, and hit enter. 4.692386 is the time in which it's going to uh, need to leave by. So we have to figure out what time that is, though. So what we're going to do is, and I'll write right on here for you, is that that means four hours, right? Four means four hours. So that means we're talking at 4 a.m., but something more. How do I find the something more? How do I find the minutes? Good, Six, 0.6923, so I take 0.6923, let's just use all of it so we're accurate, 876 times 60 for 60 minutes. That's going to figure out how many minutes in the 4 a.m. we're talking about. Okay, when you do that calculation, you land at, uh, at 41.5, so we're going to round down, so 441. The reason we round down is you don't want to round up, because if you round up, it's going to be grounded, right? So we round down, because that's the last minute you can leave, essentially. So they have to leave by 441, or they're not getting out of there. OK, yeah, let's shoot for 4. 4 430, maybe, right? OK, so 441 AM. Yeah, cutting it close, for sure. OK, questions? Minutes? So the 4, because this answer is 4, that's 4 hours. You take the 0.69, you times by 60 minutes to get the decimal of minutes. Okay, now what they want us to do is they want us for the part F here. They said, what is the next time? So we want to find the next time they have to leave. So we're looking at they can leave here. So when can it return? So we want to figure out that intersection. So let's take this off for a second here. So second trace. So five. Let's 
try to find this one. Yep. Okay, 7.87, so that means 7 hours, so 7 a.m. So again, we're going to go 7 a.m., but we're going to go ahead and do 0.873, uh, 983, times 60 to figure out the minutes. When you do that, you're going to get 52. And this time you round up because we, if you round up, that means more of what it's going to be lower. So we round up because it's going to be easier to get in. So we would say 753. Okay. I don't want you guys just to assume and just write down, I wrote down. Do you understand why we rose down versus rounded up? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just make sure that that's a diploma thing. I could see people missing just because it's just not thinking about it. Okay. All right. You round to where it helps you more. It'd be wrong, correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. True. All right, so last piece for this lesson here. Okay, in a, a certain town in Alberta, the time of sunrise for any day can be found by using this formula. Negative 1.79 sine 2 pi d over 78 over 365 plus 6.3, where t is time in hours after midnight and d is number of days in the year. So this is say, essentially saying is that t is the time in hours after midnight, so that's essentially when the sun's coming up <coughs> each day of the year. So this function represents the sun rising time each day of the year. That's why the 365 is there. d stands for per day. Okay, so like January 5th will be the fifth day of the year, right? Okay, so you put a 5 in for D. Um, obviously, we know, at least here, if you put a 5 in for D, our sun rises in January here are what? Relatively dark, right? So relatively not, that's going to be a, a, a bigger number, okay? Okay, so it says write a suitable window, so I'll take care of this for you. So if you look at a suitable window for this one, um, they use X0365, and they went by 30s. So kind of like the way you think about this is um, 0, 0.365, that's the days in a year. Going by 30 is kind of nice because that's kind of going by months, right? So it's like your windows is saying every month, which is nice, roughly. Okay, your Y, they do 2, 10, 2. Okay, so 10 is probably a little high, but it's not too bad. Okay. And so the, what can help us make a window here is we can also find the max and min. So if we find the max and min real quick, the max is uh, negative, or probably positive, 1.79. We use the positive A. The negative just flips it. Yeah, we just keep it positive. Our A is always positive. Except for the what? What part? So if you flip, though, it's that that just means the curve's happening in a different spot, but it's still happening. That's the problem. We're not we're not like especially with the six point three. So this is still moving it up. So like remember when you do your or of operations, if you flip, so I know what you're saying, Aiden, but if I flip this, all this does is it makes it do this. It makes us go down here first, and then go like that. But if I move, notice what happens. The maxes are the same. So, so that's not going to change. And so now I'm going to move up the 6.3. So that's why we just keep it positive 1.79. OK? So you're right. It is negative. But the point is, it's still going to get to the same maximum if it was positive. OK, so we do plus 6.3. So your max is uh, 7. It's going to be 8.09. 8.09 is the max. The min, we now put the negative in for the min. Okay, and that gets us 4.51. That's kind of how they got their range, I was just showing you. They use the formula to determine the nearest minute when the sun rose on the May 27th, or sorry, May 7th, which is the 127th day of the year. So they're nice enough to tell you what the exact D value was. 
Okay, so that's the d value. So we're simply going to go negative 1.79 sine 2 pi uh, 127 minus 78 over 365 plus 6.3. So you're going to calculate that. When you calculate that, you get 4.962. Nine two, and again, that tells me the day, or sorry, the hour, but not the minutes. So we're going to figure out the minutes. So 0.96292, we times by 60 to get the minutes, which you, you can see because 0.96 is close to a whole, so it's going to be really close to 5 a.m. It would be 4.58 a.m. Um, correct, because you round up because it's for sure going to be risen by then. If you round down, it's not quite risen. Yeah, you doing mine? Um, yes, what, 127 is Y2? Yeah, yeah. Or no, 127 is an X value. Yeah, no, that's, that's an X value. You can't use your calculator for the intersect part, no. But it's telling you the x to you, so you're just putting the x into here. So what you could do is if you have this in your calculator, you could do that function where you hit x and then equals and put 127, it'll go to that location. Or you can use your table. Right. You, you could do that too. Okay, determine which year the sun rose at 7 a.m. Or which day, not year. Which days of the year it rose at 7 a.m. So what would you do for this? This is what I was just kind of tell, telling Cash. So 7 a.m. is my y value. So this is where you'd go y1, y2. So y2 would be 7. And then put your function, um, the negative, I'm just going to write an arrow here. I'm not going to rewrite it again. You just put that there. Find the intersection of when it's going to rise at 7 AM. OK? You're going to see there's two answers because we have to find all times between when. We have to look at all days between 0 and 365, because it says which days of the year. So we have to look at that whole gap of 365. So it happens twice in that gap. Okay, So you have to intersect twice. When you do that, you're going to get 55 and 284. Okay, If you need help with that, that's fine. But you just do the intersect twice. I think you guys are fine with the intersect. All right, we'll stop there for this one.